Released November 28, 1995, and developed by Inscape, Bad Day on the Midway is a game that has fascinated me from afar ever since I read that David Lynch was at one time going to adapt it into a television series. That show never came to fruition, but there's still a show to see. No. The easiest way to describe the gameplay of Bad Day is a point-and-click adventure game but with no traditional puzzles. It's all about being at the right place at the right time as the right person. You start each playthrough as Timmy, a young boy entranced by everything the Midway has to offer. From there, if you click your mouse on another character, when an eyeball is present, you switch perspectives. Up, now you see their thoughts as random sentence chunks displayed on the lower portion of the screen. Exploring the park in the minds of its maven slowly unfurls the lives of these, no offense, freaks. From Lottie the Human Log, To Dagmar the Dog Tattoo Lady, you'll want to unlock all the video biographies, each illustrated by a different artist, and all to riff. It's all about bow wows. Bow wows and boys, boys. And it all started with Daddy. Daddy, a bad cop who became a worse dog trainer. Can you imagine, boys? He even tried training me, his little princess, to be a baby ballerina. But then there was this guy. That's easier said than done. The game isn't long, so if you don't want any more spoilers, pause the video now and play it. Now that they're all gone, I'll reveal why making it to midnight on the midway proves a challenge. As time progresses, the two major threats of the game pick off almost all of the characters and if you happen to be inhabiting one of those unfortunate victims, then you'll find out why the title of this game is accurate. Excuse me. I'm sure you have no idea why I'm subjecting you to this seemingly cruel and heartless death. Please understand, I take no personal pleasure from the infliction of pain, but I do abhor ugliness. And you are ugly. Ugly in the feelings found in your soul. Ugly in the thoughts that make up your mind. Ugly in the aches that you hold in your heart. But I will liberate you from all this ugliness. I will deliver the peace and serenity unavailable in this cesspool of slime we call a world. It won't last long and please feel free to let your mind scream. Death is beautiful. I can only envy your impending freedom. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye. Ted, son of the human log, will strangle all but Timmy in an effort to kill ugliness. Timmy, come here. And Oscar the rat is spreading a fast-acting, lethal plague as unusual as his red star coloring. Who will take care of Huck and Chuck? There are multiple endings depending on who survives. That, the random paths of the, I was gonna say NPCs, but I guess they're all PCs, and the uneven progression of time, make this journey not just worthy of replaying, but necessary to get the full story of the Midway. Playing it on a modern PC is difficult. 
I bought the game and thought I could get it to work with some finagling, but the earlier DOS emulators I found weren't compatible. I found a website I will link to in the description called Collection Chamber that was kind enough to create a custom installer to get it working on modern PCs. I had a few bugs where sound wouldn't always start, but for the most part, if you mess around with the mouse settings, the game is perfectly playable. Now on to what you really care about. How lynchy is it? First, a history lesson about the residents. I knew very little about the residents before playing the game. I listened to some of their early albums when I was on the 4chan Mew boards back in college and forgot about them until learning about this game. To prepare for this video, I watched a documentary about them called Theory of Obscurity that I would recommend to anybody wanting to learn more about them. The short version is that they are a music slash art collective that have been putting out weird shit for almost 50 years. They decided early on to remain anonymous under the Theory of Obscurity that states an artist can only produce pure art when the expectations and influences of the outside world are not taken into consideration. This is where the giant eyeballs and top hats came in. This is their logo. Playing their game and listening to their music, it's not surprising that reviewers at the time grasping for something to compare it to landed on Lynch, especially if you look at Lynch's artwork. While character and story-wise, Bad Day has only surface-level parallels to David Lynch's film work, there is definitely a connection to be made in its American do-it-yourself attitude and pairing of unflinching grotesque with childlike wonder. During the Ted cutscene, he talks about his butterfly collection that started when discovering a wounded bird. I don't think any other piece of media has evoked David Lynch's painting style as strongly as this. Hopefully I've shown you enough to make you interested, and I've deliberately left out more than half of the cutscenes that make up the most entertaining part of the game, so there's still plenty more to explore and discover. Highly recommend investing in the Prima official strategy guide as well. It's not only a useful resource to see everything in the game, it is chock full of stories about the characters not present in the game and behind the scenes interviews with the developers. So while this is resoundingly not Twin Peaks meets SimCity, it is a video game I could see David Lynch playing, or pacing around the room while Mark Frost played it for him. While researching after finishing this game, I found out a fan, Max Wegner, had put up an even easier version to download and play. Link in the description. Broadcaster 